Welcome to Leo's Bag of Tricks. If you mess around with electronics and hacking stuff long enough, you're sure to come across a situation where you need to control some product that has capacitive sensing touch buttons on the front of it. Now, normally that is really difficult. There's not, no clear, simple way to do that besides maybe making some little mechanical button pusher thing. But I designed a circuit that makes it really easy and basically take little uh, copper shielding foil tape, put it over the buttons, connect this little circuit, and it just emulates the press of a button. It just takes a TTL pulse in and emulates a finger pushing the button. So this will save you a lot of herky-jerky. Watch and learn. I bought this beautiful Hitari fan that has a five button capacitive touch switch interface. I love the design of this product. Hitari fans are always so well designed, it's kind of shocking. This particular model is probably the Cadillac of floor fans. It takes all of the functions to their logical extremes, but in a nice way. So here's the fan's main motherboard. You can see that it has these five springs, which are basically just soldered to the circuit board. They just bend a little tang over at the bottom of the spring and solder it right into the board. You can see they get soldered at those points right on the back. Now, there are five very thin little traces which run from each spring to uh, this chip here, which does the capacitive sensing. Now, this concept is very attractive to manufacturers. Obviously, the bill of materials count and price is low because these springs obviously cost nothing. And mechanically, it's very easy to interface it with a very sloppy mechanical tolerance to whatever housing covers this thing. So the, the cover actually is just a thin piece of uh, translucent plastic, which gets illuminated by these LEDs that are at the bottom of each and every spring. So these tell you the status of the product. And it generally works okay, but in my mind, I find that these capacitive switches are never 100% reliable. You always have that sort of uncertain feeling when you touch the button, because sometimes you have to touch it twice, or maybe you didn't touch it in the right place. It's just not 100% positive or, or satisfying like a real mechanical switch is. It's also easily uh, confused by moisture or uh, dirt gunking up the surface because it ends up as acting as a conductive object in front of the electrode which can confuse the sensors. Now, if you look at this board, the 230 volts AC mains comes in here. There's a little bit of filtering here. This is a common mode choke. And then this part is a non-isolated, simple buck converter. It has no transformer. It's only these cheapy drum inductors. So this is a non-isolated design, which means that this whole board is live at mains potential. So were we to try to go connecting stuff to this, we would have to worry about uh, mains isolation because this whole board is live and it's a shock hazard. So we definitely want to come up with a better, safer way to interface with it that is not going to give us problems with this direct mains connection. Looking at the underside of the fan, we can see where that board fits in. It just gets screwed in and those springs fit into these cylindrical holes that basically guide the spring up to the surface where it fits against the translucent graphic panel. You can see here the sunlight shining through those graphic panels. Now when you're doing this, I find that it's really smart 
to experiment with the size and placement of the electrodes that you're going to put on the thing first. Just stick some copper foil tape on there and then poke at it with a wire to make sure that it works as you expect. So here's the circuit. It's ridiculously simple. It's only five components, two diodes, two resistors, and one capacitor. The diodes are acting as switches. When the input is high, both diodes are reverse biased, and the junction between the two of them that connects to the electrode is basically a super high impedance point with only minuscule junction capacitance causing any leakage. When you pull the input low, it forward biases both diodes. A small current flows, and that junction between the two diodes now looks like a low impedance point to ground. This allows capacitively coupled currents to flow, which will trigger the capacitive switch that the electrode is placed over. Now, if you want to control this thing with a simple switch to ground, I've drawn another variation here that has a 10K pull-up resistor to 5 volts and a simple switch. That'll do the trick. So here I have the whole system installed on the fan. I basically just use this copper shielding tape to make electrodes about the same size as the buttons. And I just put them right on top of the plastic, uh, right exactly where the little springs are. It covers up the LEDs, but the LEDs don't tell you anything anyway. Um, I had to fiddle around with the size of these a little bit to get it to work. It's not the easiest thing, but you basically just kind of have to cover it. I also included a ground return electrode off the side here. This capacitively couples to the circuit board underneath. It provides actually a return path for currents that flow from the sensing electrodes, believe it or not. Um, the basic concept requires a return path always. It will still work if you take that off. The return path would then be through the power cable that feeds the, um, the button circuit board and th that would ultimately return the current back to the AC line. And it's again always capacitively coupled. So here, it's a close-up uh, view of this thing. You can see here the two signal diodes and this is the uh, junction that stimulates the sensor. The key thing is, is that this junction here between these two diodes is the critical thing. You really want to keep this whole business close and tight as possible to the electrodes. Putting long wires on this part right here will result in failure. You've got to have this part really close to the electrodes. That's key. So here's the little remote control I built for the fan. These leads go off to a 5 volt power supply. And the five buttons that are on here are just mapped through this cable to go and trigger the sensor board. So let's try it out. Turn it on. Set the speed. Turn the swing on and off. And mess with the timer. Turn on the natural mode, whatever the hell that is, and turn it off at the end. So I hope you learned something fun and interesting in this episode. Thank you all so much. Please like and subscribe and comment your hearts out down below.